Hello and welcome back to Creative Pet Keeping. Today we are going to take a look at different types of containers that you can draw your betta spawn. I've tried a variety over the few years that I've been breeding and I will go over the variety I've tried, the pros and cons of each, and what is my favorite. So let's get started. As I discuss jarring bettas, I want to put a little tiny disclaimer that jarring bettas is predominantly meant for a temporary solution when you breed a betta spawn and they become too aggressive to be kept together in a tank to grow out. So you jar them temporarily for, you know, a few weeks to a few months. It could be a few days. It really depends on your spawn. And then afterwards, you can sell your fish and they will go to their forever homes. So this is not particularly a tutorial for your pet fish. For your pet fish, I recommend you put it in a nice little tank that is overgrown. Hopefully not overgrown like this one, but that's that's still cool. He likes it. Big Daddy's living his best life and he's actually the daddy of my current unicorn spawn. So let's talk about all the different jars. Ba -da 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 -da. So let's start with the most popular container that you see amongst breeders. This is a Beanie Baby container. So this is a display container that back in the day when people used to collect those little uh, Beanie Baby teddy bears, used to put them in here because some of them used to be uh, worth a lot of money so they would kind of keep them safe. What's cool about these is uh, depending on what brand you get, some come with lids. The particular brand I got got discontinued, um, so that's really kind of unfortunate but they had little lids that I drilled little feeding holes and this is nice because automatically it prevents your fish from jumping out so they're nice safe and secure it's a little easy to see them because the edges are you know pretty straightforward the downsides to this is obviously it does scratch and if you drop it see I scratched it right here if you drop it it will uh, break very easily because this is a kind of an acrylic material that is not very strong but they are still definitely a favorite that I go to and they do make really good backup uh, phot photography tanks even though you have to be mindful of the surface so you have to be very careful when you clean these because these are not really meant to last you a long time but they're definitely one of my favorites. Another option of course speaking of jarring bettas we're going to talk about jars so we actually have uh, two different types of jars here the cool thing about jars is you can just keep jars from all the different foods that you buy over the years. Just make sure you properly clean them and then they'll be awesome. They, you don't have to worry about them getting scratched too much because, you know, it is glass. It is a little bit more environmentally friendly and you don't have to worry about any chemicals um, from plastics leaching into your bettas. So those are some pros. It's also very easy to clean and sanitize these. You could even pop these in the dishwasher as long as you're not using detergent. Uh, some dishwashers have a really uh, high sanitation cycle where they just will sanitize with high heat. That's kind of really awesome when you sanitize. I also like to sanitize with bleach. And preferably, I do like to use larger jars and get larger jars if possible. The downside is because they are round, they kind of distort how your fish look. So it's a bit difficult to judge the form of your fish as well as uh, take pictures and videos of your little fishy friends. Another popular option are these large storage containers that you can usually get at your you know average big box store I got these particularly from Walmart this is the particular brand and they are one gallon jars they also have the lids and sometimes I will drill holes in the lids as well like I would here so this one's kind of brand new it gives you an idea of what it looks like you can kind of grip it right here so it's a little easier to pick it up if you need the downside oh I'm knocking things over the downside to this just like this container is it's a little tricky to clean these sometimes and they are prone to scratching do not put this in a dishwasher because if you put it on any sort of hot you know uh, sanitization cycle this will melt this will not hold up to it now of course you don't have to get this particular type of container there's different brands of companies that sell different plastic storage containers and you can order them in bulk when you order them but in bulk they become much more affordable and cost effective when you buy them individually at the store like I do they're kind of pricey but I've been just kind of buying a couple here and there as I need them then of course 
there are the deli cups. So there's the little tiny cups that were usually roughly about the size of what's at the pet store and I don't really like how small they are. So I prefer, if you're gonna use a deli cup, try to get the larger ones. And of course you could get ones that are clear. I actually particularly am not using deli cups right now. These are some that I'm just using for food, but I still brought them out as an example. The pros to these is they're stackable. So if you take breaks in between spawning, or don't want to commit, you know, you just want to do maybe one spawn and then you want to be able to put your material, spawning materials away very easily, this is the easiest way. You can't really put these inside or these or even these. It's, it's the, All of this starts to take up space over time as you collect all of your materials. So this is a little bit easier. Definitely if you get the clear ones, you'll be able to see your fish. Uh, for comparison, they're roughly kind of comparably about the size of the smaller jar. So they're a lot better than, than you know the little cup. You still will probably have to do water changes every day or every other day with this water volume, but they could be something that may work for you. And of course there's weird things you can experiment with. Like I've even jarred fish in these kind of plastic cups. If you want to check out the weird experiment I did with uh, my very first spawn where I, well, I'll, I'll let you see the video. One interesting thing that you should also consider when choosing the type of container you want to jar your fish in is how much water you can fit inside. So you know the water volume. With these particular beanies, because they have the lid, I can fill them up to the tippy top. There's still space for the better to build a bubble nest, take breaths, and you know, there's still gonna be oxygen exchange without worrying about the fish jumping out. If I had no lid, I would probably fill the water maybe up to here, so that would already cut my water volume down. With the jars, what I did is I actually used to put um, the crafting knitting mesh on top for these, so I was able to fill them up pretty much to the top. But when you look at these containers, they don't look like there's a huge difference in water volume, but I'll give you a good comparison. So we're gonna move this over here, and I'm just gonna pour this inside to give you an idea of how much water is actually in here compared to a gallon. So I'm gonna pour this in. And as you can see, this compared to this, all of a sudden is a really big difference. Even though you're like, oh, my jars are giving my fish plenty of water. If you compare it to the one gallon, this is all you're really giving your fish. That's kind of it. So, you know, don't let the sizes deceive you because that could be a little misleading. For the same comparison, I will pour the water in here into the larger jar. So as you can see, the difference between the larger and the smaller jar even itself is quite big because as you can see, this is actually almost twice if you fill it up all the way this would this one would be almost twice as much which is why if given a choice i would prefer this over this because there's going to be greater water volume the more water volume you have the more stable temperature you're going to have in your jars uh the more you know ammonia and other chemicals are going to be dispersed so you know you can get away with maybe pushing your water changes uh, apart a little more if for some reason you're busy or you know something happens with life and also your fish have just more space to exercise and do fishy things. For another comparison, let's do this with the beanie right here. So if you would look at this and this, you would think, oh, they're, you know, this is obviously bigger, but maybe it's not that much bigger. So you might be like, oh, this is a great, you know, option instead of, uh, you know, going for the one gallon jars because this is maybe nicer, but if you pour in the water once again, hopefully I don't spill anything. The amount of water that fits in these beanies is definitely bigger. It's more comparable to the larger jars versus the smaller jars. But as you can see, an entire beanie only doesn't even fit halfway. It's just almost half. It's almost half. So if you really want to give your fish the most water possible, the greatest water volume, I would really just, just aim for a gallon. A gallon is, is a really good bet. You, I mean, just the water temperature is going to be more stable. The water itself is going to be a little more stable. Uh, your fish will have more space and it'll just overall, it's going to be a better environment. And to give you an example, 
this is what I kind of have going on here. So I have more jars in my closet. And those are have the Indian Alley tannins. But as you can see, these are some of the fish I'm going to be listing on my uh, Patreon very soon. I just took pictures of them yesterday. Uh, these already were listed but not claimed, so that I'm going to probably be listing them on my website in a few days as well for sale. But as you can see, they've got a lot of space. They've got some plants in there. If I want to, I can very easily flare them just by uncarding them, and then they'll see each other, and they'll do some little fun flare adventures like this little blue guy, I kind of want to call him Merlin. He's kind of cute. I think he's already starting to marble since I took a picture of him yesterday. I don't think he had the black on him. I swear I can't take pictures of these guys fast enough. First they were taking forever to marble, and now all of a sudden they're being super speedy about it. So I guess now is the exciting marbling time. So that is my, at the moment, preferred method. I can get away with doing water changes twice a week which is way better. It's still a lot of work, but it's a lot less work and I prefer it that way versus every other day. It's a little less stressful on the fish as well because I'm not making a lot of changes in their water. But that is my current preferred method when I breed and temporarily jar my bettas. This is gonna be a little bonus comparison because I just thought of this randomly, but this is roughly about the water volume of the cups that they keep pet store bettas in. And I wanna just give you a comparison of how much water this is compared to how much water I keep my fish in when I jar them. So the pet store bettas get just about, just about this much water, which is kind of what I leave when I do water changes. So I do like 95% water changes, I'll leave just enough so they're comfortably still in there. And then I'll fill a pet cup. That is, that's all they get. That's it. That's it. And these, these jars, I mean, not jars, but these containers get only changed out once a week. So not only do I change out mine twice a week, but the water volume, there's a difference. It's huge. It's huge. It's huge. So, you know, I mean, anything is better at this point than this. Even if you get these kind of jars, there's definitely more water. Um, I can actually give you an idea of how much water from a betta cup fits into these smaller jars, which were the very first containers that I used to jar my bettas in. This is a fun, this is a fun game of water pouring. So look at that. Even with this, not even half of the water. And these jars, I used to change the water every other day consistently while I had them. So they had twice the amount of water and they still had more water changes than at the pet store, so just a, just a fun game. Experiment with the containers, see how much uh, water can fit in them if you have a couple different ones. I would suggest when you're breeding bettas, try a different kind. You don't have to massively buy like, you know, 15 containers of one or 100 containers of one. You can buy, you know, a few here, a few there, save up a couple and experiment to see with what you like, what is your water change schedule, and of course, you know, when choosing something for your fish, try to give them a little more space. So I would say, you know, this is the smaller scale, um, you know, including, you know, these little deli cups as well. I would prefer to go on the slightly like medium to larger scale in terms of housing your fish.